what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here we're going to be talking about i know what you did last summer in this video mostly here today and then we'll teeter off into talking about a small update regarding terrifier 3 but just to start off and recap everything we've learned so far about this upcoming installment in the franchise last february it was reported that sony will be looking to give us a true i know what you did last summer 3 but i guess it could actually be considered a 2 if it ignores still know what you did Anyway, Freddie Prince Jr. and Jennifer Love Hewitt were reportedly in talks to reprise their roles. Now, Leah McKendrick wrote the screenplay while Jen Robinson is supposed to be directing it. Freddie Prince Jr. denied reading a script sometime after that, and then he seemed pretty upset to some degree, or bothered at least, that his name was brought up in the reports. But according to Cinestealth, this could all just be a tactic by Prince to get a bigger payday. Then it was just crickets for the rest of the year until more recently, when McKendrick made some interesting comments about trusting her audience and taking the less is more approach, which I love reading about. So of course, naturally would also likely contributed to us hearing nothing in crickets for the rest of the year after February was the ongoing writers and actors strike, which seems to have impacted what was going on as I work my way through into where we stand right now, as it pertains to the current updating status or the current to date status on this film. So it was just crickets for the rest of the year after that. But then even prior to McKendrick's comments, Jennifer Love Hewitt, who we know starred as Julie James in the first two films, was asked on a podcast if she'd be down to return. And she said yes. What was interesting, though, and I've stated this in the past, it was very interesting how she never brought up the fact that a new one was in development or that she was in talks to return, leaving me to think these two things. She either had already signed and is under an NDA or she just completely forgot about a new one being in development despite reputable outlets reporting she was in talks to return. The only known story details that we have so far, even though they're vague, they gave us an idea of what we would of what it would be like because it seems like it's going to be very similar to screen five so the pitch reportedly blew studio execs away when the sequel was pitched last fall especially given the recent success of the screen franchise the idea of bringing back original cast members to draw in old fans while also adding fresh faces to relaunch the series was too good for the studio to pass up sony also saw it important to not reboot the franchise but do a sort of passing of the torch type sequel where original cast members are brought back as a new generation cast members are added to the ensemble similar to films like scream or creed once the idea was pitched by Robinson and McKendrick, the next step was getting Hewitt and Prince back on board, which the two were game for after hearing the pitch. Now, as of today, the update we've got this week comes from Cinestealth. It seems that Julie is a must have for this story to work. According to Cinestealth, I know what you did last summer is moving along nicely, but the script still isn't ready, which again, probably has to do with the writer strike last year. The pitch that was reportedly loved can only work if Julie comes back, according to Cinestealth. At least if she comes back, he, they put in parentheses, which leaves me thinking Ray is expendable to the story, even though they want him back, but Julie is a must have. But why? My best guess is that this story has to do with Julie's kids, maybe a sibling we didn't know about or some relative, but Ray, it is the kids. Ray isn't the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he's expendable to the story if it's that type of scenario or Julie could be at the center of the motive so the motive becomes odd if Julie is missing there's just endless possibilities as to why Julie seems like a must-have again according to the words of Cinestuff what do you guys think it is about Julie that's making her a must-have for the ongoing proceedings that pertain to the upcoming I Know What You Did Last Summer 3. I also do not see anywhere online where there's any indication that they are either A, ignoring Still Know What You Did Last Summer or keeping it canon. My best assumption is that they are gonna still keep it canon, but because if you do a legacy sequel, is there really a need to ignore I Still Know What You Did Last Summer? I don't think so, even though I think the first film is better than I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. I don't think there's a need to ignore it and of course it does leave the door open to have brandy return because i know so many people want brandy to return i just don't see a need to ignore it at all i'm just curious as to what even could possibly be the story that makes julie such a significant puzzle or piece to the puzzle because what what else is there I, this is why i love knowing that the pitch blew these sony execs away because then it comes now down to us seeing it and seeing oh that's what you were blown away by and if it's something lackluster it's going to be like well you could have kept that in the drafts i don't know what you were so impressed by 
So we're gonna shift gears into Terrifier 3. Art the Clown might be running into some problems at a bar during Terrifier 3. Allegedly, Art is going to be confronted by a guy named Eddie who is ready to knock his head off with a bat. So what happens is they toast Art the Clown after he comes into the bar or whatever facility this is, I'm assuming, and they call him Clowny. <laughs> but I guess Art does something wild like he always tends to do around others with no care. And then Eddie threatens to beat him if he doesn't leave. Now, it would also appear that Art manages to whiz or pee on someone during this sequence before leaving. We got this cool picture of Art on set from Damien Leone today as well. Hopefully, filming is going incredibly fine for everyone out there in New York because the filming just started late last month, I believe. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you can never video. In the description, I will have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.